All right, I'm here with Brett Ewing, CEO of Axe.ai, redefining security. And I wanna ask you to just share with us a little bit about you, your story, and how you got to this place. Yeah, so um, I got into cybersecurity right when it was just starting. My, my college just created a cyber program when I was in my third year of my bachelor's degree, and I switched into cybersecurity my last year. Um, so it was a really relatively new industry. You know, it was information security before cybersecurity. And uh, I was lucky enough to have a uh, professor named uh, Dr. Mike Labasi, who I still work with and I'm a researcher with um, today. And we, he got me introduced to a man named Alex Fry, who is one of the OG hackers of the day. Um, he was one of the first 150, what's called a GSE, or a GAIAC security expert, which if you ever look at the cybersecurity security certification stack, the GSE is the one at the very top. And there are fewer than 400 in the world, and he's one of them. Um, he was also the one who founded NASA's web application security program. And when Mike introduced um, Alex to myself, he was like, uh, this kid doesn't know much about cyber, but he's very young and ambitious. So um, I think he could be a good, uh, you know, protege for you. And from there, me and Alex started building companies and building teams. And now about four years into our journey of not just working for ourselves, but building other companies, we now have 30 people under both our um, our banners um, at SCI and Axe AI. And uh, we also came together and built a nonprofit outreach called Hack Dayton, where we spread um, basically hands on keyboard skill development and education outreach uh, to bring in the next generation of hackers and offensive security engineers. Wow. Was there ever a moment where you almost gave up? And if so, what kept you going? Uh, I don't think I ever thought about giving up, but I definitely had some serious, we had some serious ups and downs. Um, 2020 hit us really hard. Uh, it was just Alex and myself, and I think one other engineer at the time, uh, at least on salary. And, you know, March 2020, I was, I was moving to Washington, D.C. to work in a red team right on Pennsylvania Avenue, and then the entire world stopped, and I could no longer move to D.C. And, uh, so that was a that was a big shakeup for us. All our clients stopped talking to us, and you know, um, it was tough. But um, we've uh, yeah always you know kind of just persevered over whatever we whatever challenges we've had. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'd ever say I, I was ever close to quitting. I just uh, yeah we had we, we, you know you have your struggles as you're young and you know uh, burgeoning company. So mm -hmm. what's something you believed in as a child that still fuels your work today? Oh, uh, when I was 11 years old, a, uh, a wrestling coach by the name of Dustin Cruel told me that it doesn't matter how fast you are, how smart you are, how strong you are. All that matters in the sport of wrestling is uh, if, you're, if you work harder than everyone else, you'll achieve more than you could ever dream. And I pretty much stuck to that in my entire life. And uh, I am never the smartest person in the room where you know, the most technically so savvy, but um, I'm able to bring those people into the room and know where my limitations are. And uh, that uh, has really guided me in my career. What's one thing your brand feels that people don't always hear? My brand feels? Um, I don't know, we have a really, we have a really cool vibe. Like a lot of my teams uh, here in Southwest Ohio, so a lot of us are gonna come together and all, uh, hang out and have a good time. Uh, we all actually just came from the Sands Orlando um, conference, and that was the first time we got eight of us all together. And uh, we were kind of absolute chaos the first couple days of just like getting to, you know, not be behind a screen and like get to actually hang out with each other, you know, go out and have food, have a drink. And uh, Father Ewing had to uh, lay down some ground rules because we were going out till 3.30 in the morning and showing up class at 8 a.m. But uh, so I, I, said, I said a hard line of midnight at least. Yeah. Um, but uh, after after we kind of stabilized, we all pull. So we the of this eight of us, seven of us could win uh, our classes challenge coins. 
all seven of us won our class challenge coins at the end of the week. So uh, we can both party hard and, you know, play hard. <laughs> Good. When did AI first show up in your workflow and what was your initial reaction? Um, if we're talking about like generative AI, you know, probably the early days of, you know, ChatGPT 2.0 uh, kind of era. But prior to that, we were doing machine learning and um, one of the first things we utilized was in 2018 was a, um, a password cracker that analyzed all of your social media and you know, online presence and was able to create very good predictive passwords based on that information. And that was probably our, like, one of our first projects where we like, really utilized machine learning in an applicable way. What part of your work can AI not do that needs that human touch? Uh, I think Apple really outed it here recently. Like the AIs are very good at remembering and duplicating and copying, but they aren't very good at, you know, abstract thought or getting to that, you know, next line of like reasoning. And that's where you kind of always need an engineer in the loop. Um, it's really like the basis of, of where our platform operates. We, we are all about augmenting the engineer, not trying to automate them. Um, there's lots of you know little low-hanging fruit things that you can kind of automate away that make your life easier but the the overall job of like a pen tester or an incident handler or a forensics investigator there always needs to be that you know squishy brain in the pilot seat to actually like operate these things and really have that abstract thought of how do I connect all the outputs and all these tools and make sure they're all working fluidly together um, so yeah, there's an infinite amount of places you need a, a human in the loop, um, for, for our job at least, which is why I think, you know, we have really good job security in the future on, unlike maybe some of the others. What's a misconception people have about AI when it comes to the creative process? Misconceptions about the creative process. Um, I think a lot of people aren't utilizing They'll just use a an AI. They'll hop into a chat GPT session or Claude and they'll just have a conversation back and forth with it. But what you really need to do is utilize these AIs against each other. So you take one that's particularly good at a particular type of reasoning. Maybe it's um, you know, deep researching what um, topics you want to articulate or you know play around with or come up with new ideas. And then you can use, you can take that output, you can feed it to other AIs and say, you know, hey, take a look at this as, you know, start out as a researcher, then then go into being a teacher that's overseeing researchers. What kind of, what would a teacher see in this research project that, you know, there are holes in? And then, you know, again, taking that, that inputs and outputs and putting it into another AI that is better at, uh, maybe crafting the marketing materials or the visualization of what it is you're trying to work with whatever idea you're trying to sculpt and that um, kind of going in and out of those different types of AIs and their own specialties will create a much better final product than just simply interacting with one specific model. Um, so really, you know, Play, playing the AIs against each other and getting them to like, kind of work out the kinks each other has and um, you know, using each for their own specialty, I think is something that a lot of standard users aren't applying as much as they should be. Mm, that's good. How would you describe the perfect interaction between the technology and the human inside? Um, I think the, the technology needs to be effectively communicating with the individual and the better you make your AI at communicating effectively and giving a true understanding of, of what is going on what um, you know for us we you know we're testers so we we're always in it, um, analyzing a new type of infrastructure and the I just need the AI to give me an understanding of, you know, where the vulnerabilities are at, where are misconfigurations, how can I tie that into the whole exploit and really provide value for this company outside of just, um, you know, just a simple report. People need 
you know, this, this constant state. I think that's what AI is really good at is providing a, a constant loop of this is where the changes are being made. These are the new things that are being introduced, you know, keeping you up to date and, and being able to, um, you know, take that information, take that knowledge and be able to share it effectively, be able to communicate with all of the, um, you know, the, the people that are in ownership of the project, that all the key stakeholders that need to understand, um, you know, what it is we're doing and why, why it's important. Um, that's one of the reasons I, I think doing things like AI week and going to conferences and going out and speaking is becoming one of the more important, um, tool sets in cybersecurity and in AIs, just being able to go out and effectively communicate what these technologies do and how to apply them. Um, it's becoming an incredibly you know, powerful skill in a world where the AI is, is you know, consuming a lot of that technical knowledge. You know, you, you know, in theory, they're going to have you know, PhD mini everything AI agents for us to be able to you know, utilize that knowledge base. So it's not about how much knowledge necessarily you can maintain as an individual. It's about how can you effectively communicate what those, you know, so those kind of like source knowledge materials are, are giving to you and how you can, you know, very quickly move in and out of different domains, whether it's, you know, highly technical, highly business or, you know, marketing and, and, you know, all these different, you know, sub facets that you're not necessarily going to have this ultimate specialty in but being able to effectively utilize the collective knowledge and then you know, articulate effectively. I think that's super important here coming, I mean, now. <laughs> yeah. Well, how is Axe making an impact on the future of cybersecurity? Yeah, uh, daily. And it's uh, it's getting really exciting. I literally just got out of our, our, our weekly executive meeting and just seeing how quickly a company like ours could create a product, get it into market, and start creating functionality that we don't see anywhere else like we see a like occasionally we'll start to see someone that's like sort of a competitor but really it's only in this small piece of functionality and we've just been able to create you know so many different like niche capabilities we we kind of forget about it in, in, inside our own little bubble like um you know we have our team of 12 now uh I think it's, I think as of yesterday, like 17, we just took on five new uh, interns and we're able to produce these new types of functionality that some people come in and interview for us and they're like, I've never seen this before. I feel like, I, I can't wait to get involved with you guys because I not seen this in any commercial product right now. And I would love to be on this kind of cutting edge. And for, you know, a relatively small entity that, you know, we bootstrapped everything with like 300 grand and now we're in a market and we've never taken anybody's VC money or, you know, a seed round. What is possible with a small team and just, you know, blood, sweat and tears and a little bit of money can get you incredibly far, completely leapfrog, like just like long time industry players. Um, We've literally just pitched our product to an entity that is um, a testing company that does seven billion a year in testing, and they looked at our product and immediately were like, we need this. This would, you know, or this would create or, or orders of magnitude more capacity for all of our engineers at once. And we're like, yeah, 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 that'd be great. <laughs> we're this, you know, little 30 person, you know, garage band cybersecurity company in comparison. And these big entities that are, you know, established capital backed and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah, we should have built something like this. Let's let's buy you. And we're like, I can't believe you didn't think of this yet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think there's so much opportunity out there, um, especially seeing like the what the new generation is coming up with. Um, like I'm 35, but I have already realized that I'm a dinosaur in this industry. Like there are just a whole bunch of like sub 30 year olds, people straight out of high school and college that are going to leapfrog us so fast because they were just brought up, you know, with AI, with the understanding that you had to have 
the this multifaceted approach to your development, both being a software developer, being a cybersecurity engineer, being an AI developer, and they're coming up and they're just gonna crush us because they're moving so fast and they were just brought up on this technology and there's so much room um, for just rapid growth and all kinds of cool new um, you know, solutions are gonna be brought into the market and it's a really exciting time. Wow. What's your superhero power, the thing that AI cannot replace? Uh, I mean, yeah, really like communication and getting the right people in the, in the room. Um, I've been really effective at being able to look at an individual, have a 30 minute conversation with them and know whether or not they're gonna be a good fit. Um, I, I just went through, so I had over a hundred resumes that we went through, brought that down to 30 interviews, and then we selected 10. And I was a part of that entire process and just being able to, you know, very quickly get an understanding of where someone's passionate and how I can kind of unleash them onto the market or onto a problem. And um, it's there's so much talent out there. Like the big co's aren't hiring right now. There's just tons of opportunity for people to come up and organize a group of you know developers, hackers, and just you know tinkerers and build some really cool products. And Brett, thank you for sharing with us about how Axe is using AI and the human touch to bring a spark to the cybersecurity world. Thank you so much for having me.